morning, everybody. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. This is a holiday week, so just as a reminder, uh, for the Thanksgiving holiday, both 5Q and ECA will be done at 2 o'clock on Wednesday, as I hope you will too, and closed on Thursday and Friday, which uh, probably everybody knew that already, but we thought we would remind you. Um, <clears throat> and today's call, we have um, one of our guys who's been with us a long time. He's one of our most forward-thinking advisors. He always got his eye out both for what's happening in the industry. He uh, 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 gives me a lot of ideas about, about articles uh, that are out there that I've missed and also tools that are available. And and he brought this to our attention and Missy actually kind of looked at it with him and, and I wanted him, you guys to know that this was at least a tool that was available to people that's out there, not what's in 5Q, but that's out there that if you think it's a good idea, you can go out and get this tool yourself. And how it's, at, and Mark's gonna talk about how it actually has increased his business. So Missy and Mark. Yeah, thanks. So oh. I, guys, I actually, uh, you know, we get a lot of different ideas that are brought to us, which is which is wonderful. And so we look at a lot of different things. And this was one that I um, personally kind of looked at after talking with Mark. Um, and um, and I think that there's uh, some. I think it's a cool little tool. So I thought that it was worthwhile for us to bring it up. And um, also, um, Mark had some things that he shared with me while we were talking on the phone. And I just uh, thought that they might be helpful um, ideas to kind of bring up with you guys and kind of how he's incorporated it. So I guess I'll start, Mark, by just saying, you know, how how do you incorporate this tool, which is what we're displaying here on the on the screen? It's called the asset map. So how do you incorporate this asset map when you use the 21 point checklist? Well, uh, thank you for having me on. And um, well, interesting enough, I was, um, we wanted a, just a more simple financial planning tool and um, you know, some of the other guys in my office, and we all know how we feel about financial plans if you've been with Mike long enough, that uh, you know, they're not the greatest thing in the world, but we can rely on the projections. However, when I looked at this asset map, the light bulb went off and I said, gee, you know, how many people do I have that, you know, I have to nag to get on that survivor's guide? How easy would it be just to do this for the client give them some semblance of a financial plan, but doing it our way. Um, and more so than having this inserted into the survivor's guide under where we list the assets. So that was the first uh, the first light bulb moment that went off and people really love it. And when you, when you were telling me about it, one of the things that kind of jumped in my head was, I think it's kind of human nature that when people see what you're trying to build is like their whole you know, portfolio or their whole kind of layout, if there are things that are missing, at least my human nature is, uh oh, I must have forgotten to tell Mark about this, or um, gosh, I can't stand the fact that down here, you know, I'm 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 missing an account that Mark doesn't have listed. So, um, have you found this to be a tool that help has helped to open up doors? Because my I guess my human nature is if there's something missing that I either accidentally forgot to tell you about or that I sort of withheld information from um, of the accounts that I have, does it help you be able to kind of uncover those things? It, it does. And, and you know, with the way we work, we, we always want to get every last penny for our client, right? It's from our client. And a lot of times they're just getting older and they just forget. So I had one, uh, one of the gentlemen I did this for came in and he had two mass mutual policies. And it turned out um, they were, one of them was a, an old uh, Ascend FIA um, that wasn't, you know, that was stuck in the mud at a low cap. The other was a cash value life policy. So I ended up, um, you know, right there was another $150,000 in FIA business. I was able to do just by uh, digging that up. And it, it was something where he, he, he had forgot all about it. So yeah, there's one other opportunity there. Um, and then, you know, just going down deeper into the, into the full checklist that we do, um, they, every one of these assets, once you uh, pump in the beneficiaries, you can do a beneficiary report to make sure that the beneficiaries are correctly uh, affixed to their accounts like we like to scrub through. So a lot of cool little things. It's almost like bringing a, you're almost digitizing part of the 21 point checklist in a way, you know, and just making it more, you know, just making it all come to light for, for clients so they can see where everything is. And when would you actually like give this to them? This is after they're a client. You don't use this as a, I know some people are using this as their front leading thing. I uh, certainly would not uh, use this in any way, shape or form to replace uh, the full checklist in any way. Um, it, it would be complimentary once they come on board, once all their money's moved over. 
um, then you can present this to them as like a you know like a final little gift and say oh this is for your survivor's guide and at that point there there just puts in mind such an ease um, it's it's really it's really pretty powerful to say. So, so you're essentially you're doing the process the exact same way. You're having them come on in for their first meeting. You're you're gathering the data, getting their statements, going through the 21, and then this is just kind of your little value add at the end to give them a visual. Um, yep. You know, it, obviously they you encourage them to get their survivor's guide done, their quality of directive life done, but their you know the the asset part that's kind of falls within that survivor's guide. Um, you're using this as a little bit of a tool to help um, cement yeah. that because it has your logo on it. It has your disclosure on it. And so, um, of course, if, you know, God forbid they don't take the time to do all of the pieces of the survivor's guide and fill it out in its entirety or, um, you know, at least then their beneficiaries or their kids or whoever is uncovering some of this information has your name, your logo uh yep. it has your name your logo on it and so they know who to come and actually ask for help hopefully yes you want you want them to call you even before they call the attorney you know because a lot right. of times the attorney isn't you know so i want i want to encourage them just come see me first and then we'll sort it out from there and if you call the lawyer first then i, I can't really tell what direction you're going to go but if they call me first and i get that interfacing with those beneficiaries and it increases my chance of retaining those assets down the road sure and Mark, how often, was, oh, just kidding, uh, how often have you showed this to a person and then they said, oh, wait, 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 you don't have my uh, $100,000 CD on this. Has that ever happened where when you've shown this to them, other money has popped into their head that they hadn't thought about? Missy referred to it at the beginning of this, but I want to know in real life, has that ever happened? Yeah, a couple times already. And I, I mean, I'm not really that far deep into this. I might have done maybe 10 or 15 of them. You know, I had to learn how to do it. and not, not that this matters, but I had cataract surgery. I couldn't see a thing, so I was blind as a bat. <laughs> so this really wasn't very easy to use. Now, now that I got my eyesight back, I can knock one of these things out in probably 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Yeah. So you know, and it's 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 a good it's a cool little tool, and it does a lot more. But I won't get into all those other features. But it really does help organize things, and I think it uh, sort of cements the relationship as well, because it's not like the people want to be able to see everything in one page. And this is more powerful than anything I can tell, do, or show them. So it's it's a real simple, real simple way of organizing their money, and then figuring out where to pull the money from later on too. You cool. Know, and just much easier. Perfect. Well, guys, I did put uh, some information out there um, on our resources, and Mike just flipped to it here. So uh, the software is called Asset Map. Um, you can go take a look at it. There's a, a website there. There's a demo you can do if it's something that is exciting to you. Um, there's a contact person, Jimmy, would be more than happy to to speak with anyone that's that's interested. He's actually got a Calendly link there as well. So if you need to do a, a demo or talk directly with him, try to make it as easy as possible. But again, it's called Asset Map. I think it's a cool little tool. You can go check it out. Um, the uh, sample that we just showed on the screen is the one that we've got um, circled there. So if you want to look at it a little bit uh, closer, I know some people say it's a little hard to see the screen sometimes with their phone or whatever they're using. So um, feel free to take a look at it. And there's a couple of little videos there as well. So yeah, I, th I thought it was a cool tool. Just wanted to bring it to your guys' attention that it exists. And thanks, Mark, thanks. for um, bringing it to my attention and for taking a few minutes to talk with us about it. Very, very welcome. Happy to contribute in any way. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. And then Jerry wanted to talk about a couple of updates since we're coming into the end of the year here. And uh, so, Jerry, what's what's happening? Yeah, you know, you bet. Thanks for having me on. Good morning, guys. Happy Monday to you. Just a couple of quick topics here. So one of them, some of you guys may have heard a little bit of steam out there, noise about DOL rules and the DOL boogeyman, you know, showing up from under the bed. And it's, it's one of those things that it's, it's always kind of like popping out. So I never try to get too concerned about it because there's always an answer to when it comes up. So you guys are always kind of hearing about this stuff and you may have heard about it. I just wanted to give it an update if you hadn't, hadn't heard that the full house passed a, a voice vote about a week, week and a half ago um, with some amendments to their, you know, the, the HR 5894, which is 
what had, you know, they always kind of just hide all of this stuff inside of one big bill, but they made a couple of amendments that, it, you know, effectively killed that rule if HR 5894 goes through. So you guys can check that out. I think advisor has an article on it too as well, but just wanted to make you guys aware if they're, you know, if you were hearing some things about that out there, that's essentially dead until the next version of it comes out sometime in the future. That's, that's always going to happen. So I wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that if you hadn't been. Um, and then also a couple other really exciting things, Equitrust, um, you guys all knew, know them, probably have used them, love their products. I think they're known for typically having really good service. The so service is a little slow right now, but um, they have great products. They have some of the best renewal rates in the history and some really, really competitive rates when it comes to um, having products with bonuses. And really, honestly, their income rider is not half bad either, but um, they're, they're, what, you know, they're a partner. I think they're just a great company to work with. Um, full comp through uh, the, the max ages on their products too, but they're doing a, a unique special right now where they're giving an additional 1% comp through the end of January. So if you have some stuff that you're looking to get in, let's go ahead, get that stuff in and you're going to get the extra piece and they're a great carrier to go with. I'd recommend them whether they're giving the comp special or not. So to me, the fact that they're doing that, that's just an extra frosting on the cake. And then that leads me, so remember, Equitrust, all their FIAs. They have great MIGAs too, but the specials on their FIA, which they have fantastic fixed rate, fix rates inside of them. But that leads me kind of to my next point, which is it's starting, you know, if you guys have been paying attention to it, it's starting to sound like the Fed is, uh, at least it sounds like they're probably done raising interest rates now. Inflation's, they're, they're seeing some signs that, you know, inflation's starting to get a hold of a little bit. So it's really starting to seem like interest rates are probably not going to go up anymore. So to me, the way I look at it is we're kind of right there at the top of the mountain right now. And we don't know how flat that mountain is, how long it's going to last, so it's going to be there. So it honestly could be two months. It could be six months, could be a year. But we're a lot closer to, you know, we're right at the top. There, You don't need to wait because they're going to go necessarily higher, you know, be probably maybe more likely potentially they could go down so my point is is if you have stuff that you want to write you know if you know your clients that you haven't gone and spoke to yet if you're thinking hey the rates are always going to be there i'm busy right now i won't worry about it you know i have all these people i need to go and and talk to about safe money and what and what they're using for the safe money in the portfolio i can always go do that what i just want to let you know is don't don't fall into that trap of feeling, hey, I, you know what, I got all this business that I'm going to take this business, and I'm going to be able to write it in January and February and March. I want you to have business for the next six, eight, nine months, but you don't know the interest rates where they're going to be at. So if you have things that are there, don't wait on it to go get it wrote. Go, hey, go get that Equitrust comp special. But more importantly, go ahead and do the right thing for your clients. Go talk to them now because there's no promise of what's going to happen tomorrow. Okay, so I just want to encourage you guys to well, do I'm that. Well, I'm gonna so jump in there. Be there for your clients. Get, Go ahead. Well, guys, psychologically, what do people do at the end of the year? Psychologically, what do people do at the end of the year? I do it. You do it. Our clients do it. What do we do? In in November, December. What do we do? When it comes to our finances, when it comes to our projects, yeah, I, I agree that Dale and Marty plan. That's right. We don't do, we plan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on a diet January 1st. I'm going to get my finances in order January 1st. I'm going to finally attack that, uh, that attic uh, and clean it out on January 1st. So guess what? As advisors, you know what? We're near the end of the year. I got the holiday. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the next – couple of months, month and a half, really retool my skills, get all of my house in order, and I'm going to really hit it hard on January 1st. Shouldn't be doing that this year. I, I, I'm a big, big uh, believer in that. This is one year, because that's what I did in, in, uh, when I was in a, a personal practice, is I would take that December and really retool everything, get everything in order. I didn't do write a lot of business. I did uh, get-togethers with my clients. I did annual reviews, but I didn't do, do um, a lot of business. 
this year is different. Why? Why would this year be different for me? And why should it be different for you? And absolutely, why should it be different for your clients? We don't know how long this is. And, and Jerry said it could be two months, could be six months, could be a year. No, it could be what, guys? It could be what? A week. <laughs> it could be a week. So what I would be doing is calling my clients and saying, hey, I've got the ability to give you an awfully good Christmas present if you'd like to hear about it. Guys, what we have to offer now, first of all, the 1% Boom for you, that's a good uh, Christmas bonus. But the Mass Mutual at 11, 11.25% 11 locked in, for, <laughs> locked in for seven years. Guys, don't, that, that, how many of your clients have I said, hey, I've got a Christmas present for you. I have a way for you to, to make up to 11.25% guaranteed and you can't lose your money. How many of them would say, nah, not really interested? How many of your clients would say that? So give me some answers there. A lot or not very many? How many people would say they're not interested in hearing up to 11.25% guaranteed with no law, guaranteed not to lose money? How many of them would say they're not interested in that? So I've got one answer. Come on, guys. Everybody answer that. Oh. And none would, say, none would say they're not interested. So I would be calling every single one of my clients to at least give them the opportunity to do this. Now, if they say they're not interested, then you've got your answer. But if, if you get more than 10% of people saying they're not interested, that would, that would tell me a lot about the trust level they have with you. What would that tell me about that? If more than 10% uh, said they're not interested, if you said, hey, I got a way for you to make a, up to 11.25% and it's guaranteed never to lose money. If you have more than 10% that say I'm not interested, what does it tell you about the trust level you have with the clientele? High not or good. low? Not good, exactly. Not good. So pl please call. I would just grab your client list, call all the way down, and, and right. make those appointments uh, now. Don't wait. Uh, Do not wait. Contract that just came through, and um, I think the date of birth is wrong. We just want to get a verification on it. Missy, can you uh, take care of that, please? One of the contracts. Thank you. So uh, please, 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 do not wait until the beginning of the year. Do it now, because once this opportunity is gone, it's gone. So today I want to talk about this book, Daniel Pink. I've talked about it here about four years ago, and I still go back and revisit it. I did a outline for myself. I revisit it on a regular basis. I actually have it hanging on my wall, the, the, the outline that I did on it. Daniel Pink, to sell is human, which means that what? How many of us sell, guys? How many of us sell on a daily basis? Whether you're in, does, does your wife sell on a daily basis? Does your teenage daughter sell on a teenage uh, on a regular basis everybody sells everybody sells so whether you're uh, uh, looking to make money or find a spouse or whatever else everyone sells so for Lazo makes a distinction between ear so what this is the first thing he was uh, that they were talking about in to sell as human there's a big distinction between irritation and agitation irritation so when we're working with our clients or when we're working with to, to convince somebody that, uh, uh, to make a change in their life for whatever reason, irritation is challenging people to do something that we want them to do. Irritation is getting the, uh, challenging somebody to do something we want to do. When you go to your uh, teenage son and say, clean your room, clean your room, who's that helping, us or them? Who's that helping, us or them? That's, that's a form of irritation. It's what we want them to do. Now, agitation, because you have to get, you know, you have to put a, a you have to put a, 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 a piece of sand in an oyster to get a pearl. You need to have some sort of irritation or agitation to get that pearl. But if it's irritation, it's what we want them to do. Agitation is getting, challenging them to do something that they want to do. So you need to, to couch it to your teenage son and why it's, it benefits them to clean up the room. See, what he discovers throughout his career is that irritation doesn't work. Try to get people to do what we want them to do. Guys, how well does it work when we try to force some uh, client to, to you, you need to change. You're not getting the highest rate of return. You're paying too much in taxes. You're paying too much in fees. You need to change. You need to change. How well does that work, guys? 
It's, I, I worked for eight years making 50 grand a year when I told them they needed to lo- <laughs> they needed to lower their taxes, needed to lower their fees, they needed to uh, lower the risks they get for the return they're getting. That gets you nothing. Agitation is what works. When they start to see, oh, this is something I need to do. I need to do. So what is the reason? What is the number one reason, the 21-point checklist, uh, that they decide, uh, that we, uh, how do we agitate them? What is the thing we agitate them about with the 21-point checklist? What's the thing that they get agitated about? That they're paying too much in fees? Nope. That they're paying, uh, taking too much risk? Nope. What are they getting agitated about? Yes, my guy withheld information to put money in his pocket and take it out of my pocket. So we've all heard about always be closing. And this book also talks about always be closing, but not in the way that we were raised. It talks about A, B, C, but it's not about always be closing. The way uh, uh, Pink describes it is that first part is A is attunement. Be attuned with your client. B, buoyancy. What do you think buoyancy is about? Remaining positive. And clarity, be specific. The more specific, the better. So with attunement, we want em- uh, empathic attunement. So we want both empathy and attunement. We need to understand and be really uh, uh, dialed in to what they're thinking. To what they're thinking. When we do that, when we have empathy, uh, we're able to really uh, get them to move forward. Now, there's one thing that we have to be uh, uh, that's problematic, which is the feeling of uh, power. So the first eight years that I was in business making 50 grand a year, I walked into that meeting feeling like who had the power, the client or me? So the first eight years, I walked into the meeting thinking who had the power? Me, that's right, Dale. I had the knowledge. I knew what they should do. I am smarter than them. I make the better decisions with money than them. I am uh, more knowledgeable about uh, what they're doing than they are. And guess what that got me? Nothing. So I had to go change my whole mindset with motivation interviewing, saying I have no power over the client. All I can do is be a facilitator. They have the power. I can facilitate them having the power. I can facilitate them making their own decision. Not because I said so, because I have no opinion. Only because they said so. There's only one person they believe 100% of the time, it is them. I have to give them the power. Now, how many of you, of you were trained with that when you came into the business? That you need to give the client all the power? Any of you? Were any of you trained that way? I know I wasn't. And I went through several different sales training courses. That's not the case. Now, here, <laughs> this, this is a fantastic way uh, this is a fantastic experiment to determine how good you are at empathy, how good you are at thinking like your client, how good you are at uh, viewing the world through their eyes, getting into their shoes. So I want you all right now with your fingertip to write a capital E on your forehead. So take your fingertip and write a capital E on your forehead. And just get some, uh, uh, some people just say D if you've done it. So just put, put in D in the comments if you've done it. So write a capital E on your forehead. Okay. So here's what they discovered. If your capital E looks like this, you, don't, you look at the world through your own eyes. If your capital E looks like this, so the person looking at you would be able to see that it was an E, not a backwards E, but a frontwards E, that means you're excellent at empathy. You're excellent at viewing the world through other people's eyes. And this is what you want to be. So if you do the E this way, guess what skill you need to work on? Empathy. Looking at the world through other people's eyes. Because if you want people to buy from you, you better be awesome at looking at, looking at uh, <laughs> uh, the world through other people's eyes. Why is this one the better one? Because when he was writing the E, he said, well, obviously, the reason I'm writing an E in my forehead is why? For my purposes or the person in front of me can read it? 
It's so the person in front of me can read it. Andre said he passed. It's awesome, Andre. So this is the way, and if you haven't done this, boy, you need to really work on this, okay? So increase your power. Increase, guys, when I went from making 50 grand a year to, to a 20-fold increase, not a 20%, a 20-fold increase in three years from making 50 grand a year to making a million a year in three years, did I increase my power? How much more confident was I walking in? When I was closing 94% of people and getting all of their money, I was obviously increasing my power, but guess how I increased that power? By giving that power to the client, by giving that power to the client. So Kellogg University uh, School of Management did a study on power. And they found that if a person feels more powerful, more knowledgeable, they only see things from their own perspective. That's what I did for eight years, I go, what's wrong with these people? These people are stupid. Why are they taking my information back to their guy who caused all the problem in the first place? Why, the, 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 the world, the, I, this, this, I, how can I work in an industry where these people that I'm working with are so idiotic? See, I was only looking at the world through my eyes. They weren't, these people are stupid because they're not doing what I want them to do. Doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work. If a person feels low power, the other person may know something that they don't know, Leads people to see things from other people's um, uh, eyes. So, guys, did I know what the client was thinking? Do I approach, do I approach a, a, a meeting that I know exactly what they're thinking? Or, or is my meeting 100% open-ended questions? Now, over time, over tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of times that the 21-point uh, checklist has been used, and the open-ended questions have been used, we have been able to discover that when we ask these open-ended questions, we know what the client's gonna say, but if the client says something other than what I want them to say, do I argue with them or I'm like, oh, this person is not appropriate to, become on a, to come on as a client. If they love the fact that their, their guy is screwing them, if they love the fact that they're getting a low rate of return for a high fee, if they love the fact that they're paying too much in fees, if they love the fact that they're using a, a, a low tenured people, and if they love that, then what would I say? You're at the right place. You're with the right guy. You're doing the right thing. How often has that happened? How often has that happened in the hundreds of thousands of times this has been used, in the 60,000 tapes that we have on uh, in our archive? How often has that happened? Never. Human nature is we don't like to be screwed. Even How about little church mouse people? People who are timid, people who are uh, don't like you know don't like to uh, make a scene or a fuss. Do they all have a breaking point where eventually they said enough is enough? Gosh darn it, and I'm done. Do they all? Yeah, they all have that, and that's why we have 21 things so we can get even the church mouse people, even the people who don't want to argue with their husband because and their husband loves their financial advisor. Eventually, she's going to say what? We're leaving. And even the church mouse husband, <laughs> or church mouse, uh, when she tells the, the husband, we're leaving, what happens? For the first, he's look, first of all, he's going to look at her like, holy crap, you've never like stood up to me before, but guess what happens? Will they leave or will they not leave? They leave, that's right, they leave that guy. So power gives you access, it gives you the keys to the kingdom. But that power is not your power, it's giving them the power. They have to have the power. So are you an emotional chameleon? Whose mood can I make next? So here's the thing. If I, um, if I have somebody who's being very mad of fact with me and getting, getting in my face, what do I do? If I have a client who's getting in my face, very mad of fact, and you know, is argumentative, what do I do? Oh, I know it's agree. I, absolutely, John. But here's the way that I do it. And I don't be quiet. No, I do not. So everybody put your two finger pointer fingertips together in front of you. Put your two pointer fingers and make them touch each other. Now push harder with the right one. What happens to your left finger? It go. It bends to the left. Push harder with your left finger. Guess what happens? It bends to the right. Now push equally. Push a little bit with the left and a little bit with the right. Harder with the left, harder with the right, harder with the right. What happens then? So this system is based on mutual respect. 
If somebody's being short and terse with me, guess what I am? If they're short and terse with me, guess what I am? Short and terse back. But I do it, I, I'm still asking questions. I'm still asking questions. But I do it in a broad manner. If somebody's being slow and thoughtful, guess what I become? Slow and thoughtful. So if you watched me at a meeting, you're going to see that I'm mirroring. I'm becoming an emotional chameleon. I'm mirroring what's happening with that client. That's how you get to the next level. Assume a power, a position of lower power. That helps you see things through the other person's eyes. And when they were doing research on negotiation principles, one of the things they, they did is they said they had um, uh, a group, uh, three different groups of people, and they wanted us to have one group of person, uh, people sell something to the other person, and they needed to negotiate that price. They had to negotiate the price, and they wanted to see what was the highest price uh, the buyer um, uh, would pay and that the seller would accept. Okay? So imagine, so they had people do it three different ways. One is they said, I want you as the seller to imagine, and I want you as the buyer to imagine how the other person is feeling. The second group, they said, I want you to imagine the seller, to, uh, to imagine how they're thinking. As the buyer, I want you to imagine what the other side is thinking. And then the control group, they gave no, uh, they gave no um, directions to whatsoever. So which of these groups do you think? There was a big, 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 big difference. Which of these groups do you think had the most success in, in satisfaction for both the buyer and the seller? Which one? Obviously, it's either it's not the control group. Is it the feeling or the thinking? The F or the T? Effort T, effort T. Yeah, I thought it was feeling too. So we're all saying feeling. Everybody said feeling. We're all wrong. <laughs> That's what I said too. Which group had a 76% highest satisfaction for both parties? It was the thinking group. Thinking about the other person, what the other person was thinking. So I wonder what, so think about this, guys. When they give me a, a, an objection, what do I coach you to do? When they give you an objection, what do I coach you to do? Tell them why they're what? Do I tell you to do the feel, felt, found? What do we, what do we find out about feel, felt, found when it comes to overcoming objections? That works or does not work with baby boomers, Gen Z, Gen X, whatever. It does not work. Feel, felt, found does not work. Wait, instead, you tell them they're right, and then you start to explain to them. That's right, Ben. You, you tell them why they're right. You give them examples of why they're right. You tell them why their logic is spot on. That's <laughs> what we teach you to do with 20, exactly this. Now, we've been doing this for 25 years, <laughs> far before this was, book was written three or four years ago. So intuitively, I knew that that's what you wanted to do, was to tell them why they're right, and it, and it ends up, science says yes, by 76%. That's almost double. Tell them why they're right. So what we also wanna do, and I just talked about this with the pointer finger in front of you, is naturally mimic or mirror what the other person's doing. Talk slow, talk slow, talk fast, talk fast. Uh, lean back, lean back, lean forward, lean forward. We all have heard this, you need to mirror what they're doing and when you do that when you do that things get so uh much easier for you so the other thing and this is a, <laughs> i use this again intuitively the other thing they found out was this is that if you touch somebody on their forearm touch somebody on their shoulder you have a much much higher chance of selling them 
And when I when I was the number one selling a, a TV salesperson in Best Buy in all the country, sold more TVs for, uh, in a, in, uh, in the uh, uh, the, year, the year I was on the sales floor than any other person in the company at Best Buy. The, all the executives came and they watched me from the mezzanine. And they said, and they afterwards they they brought me in the office and said, well, you know, really impressed, blah 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 blah. But there's two things that they found that I did. Guess what one of them was? Guess what one of them was? With every single client that came in, one of them was what? Do you think? Touching people, touching them on the forearm, touching them on the shoulder. I mean, I didn't shake their hands. That's weird. Coming in to buy a TV. But I found a reason to touch them on the shoulder, touch them on the forearm, touch them. And the second thing they found is that I, I, I laughed. And with almost every single client, and I wasn't telling them jokes. I just found a reason, a, a way to, to insert a little bit of humor in whatever we were doing and to laugh. Now, here's the thing I, I coach every single person to do. When a client comes into your office, now you can't do this if you're doing things virtually, but when they come into the office, you should greet, come out, greet them, and you should shake their hand. You should put your hand, and while you're shaking their hand, put their, your other hand on their forearm, their shoulder, and you should hold it for a one or two seconds longer than you would normally do it. And what should your eyes be doing at that point? And I, when I've talked to even big producers, what they found out when they've had their assistant <laughs> um, monitor them, you know they come out and say, hey, great, thanks for coming in, shakes hands, guess how much eye contact was and guess how much uh, uh, skin, skin contact there was. A lot or virtually none? Virtually none. So when that person comes in, this is, again, scientifically proven, forearm, you know, put, touching their forearm, touching their shoulder, uh, a, um, a handshake with, a, with eye contact, your uh, ability to sell somebody goes way up because what happens to the trust level goes way up. Mirroring uh, has much better results. Don't copy. When you're mirroring, you don't copy exactly what they do, but do it subtly. So if, if <laughs> you know, they sh it's mirroring, but they shouldn't look like they're in the, looking in the mirror. So if, if they uh, scratch their head and you scratch your head, that's not good. If they cross their legs, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, or cross your arms. You can cross your arms, not like right away, but one or two seconds later and do it casually. So you, again, this is a skill. This is a skill that takes some time. So don't do things exactly. Do it subtly. What's subtly? Well, uh, that's, again, that's why this is a skill. You have to experiment to find out what subtle is in your particular situation. And let, listen to what they say, but be aware of casually mirroring them. And that is that if they, if they talk in stories, you talk in stories. If they talk uh, very intellectually, you talk intellectually. If they talk very salt of the earth, you talk salt of the earth. So it's not only physical, it's also uh, speaking. Now, if they have a southern accent, don't, <laughs> don't start mimicking a southern accent. But are there ways that you can, when, when you're in a, um, uh, with somebody with a southern accent, that you could maybe make sure, though, that you're not um, rubbing them the wrong way by being too uh, too non-Southern. I mean, there's a, 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 those of you that uh, live down south, you you know when you're talking to a Yankee, there's things that the Yankees do that 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 irritate you, or you immediately make him think that you're not there. You know, there's somebody, there's the other team, not on your team. So be listening, or watching and listening, and try to subtly mimic what they're doing physically and and uh, through voice and through language. So watch arms and legs. Are they leaning in? Are they talking fast? Are they talking slow? Do they use certain expressions? Wait, don't copy. So don't do it right as they do it. Give them t 10 to 15 seconds, then think about following suit. If they cross their arms, don't do it right away. Give 10 to 15 seconds, then you do it yourself. If they lean back, give 10 to 15 seconds before you uh, lean back. Don't do this too many times, but instead salt it into the conversation. So don't mimic every single thing they do. Maybe it's every one or two, one out of three, one out of four. Salt it in. Wayne, begin to take your mind off mirroring and let it happen naturally. So 
Eventually, once you do this long enough, you're not even paying attention. It just happens naturally. So we're not trying to be false. We're not trying to manipulate people. We're instead subtly letting them know that they're among friends. We, we are alike. We're alike. That's what we're doing. The other thing they found out is, remember what A, what does A stand for? What's A stand for? Agree. What's the P stand for? Parroting. What's the E stand for? Empowering. Now, the P stands for parroting versus uh, paraphrasing. Is paraphrasing when somebody is paraphrasing when somebody says good or bad, guys? So G or B? Paraphrasing when somebody says good or bad. G for good, B for bad. Which one? Paraphrasing. Artie's got it. Dale's got it. G or B, guys? G or B? They did an experiment. John's got it. They did an experiment, and this experiment has done a gazillion different times. It's a very well-known experiment, but what, one of them was with um, a waitress. And they found that when the waitress paraphrased back what the people ordered versus parroting back what the person ordered, when they paraphrased, their tip did not go up at all. Their tip did not go up at all. But when they paired it exactly back what people said, the tips went up by 70%. Is that big or small, 70%? And this, is, this experiment has, gone, has been done over and over and over. That's a big difference. Now, what happens with paraphrasing, when somebody says something, if somebody says, uh, uh, I ask them a question, and they say, uh, what do, which direction do you think the market's going to go? And they say, I think the market's going to go up. And I say, I think the market's going to go up too. Is that, is, that's parroting. If they say, I think the market's going to go up, and I say, I think the market's going to go up too. That's parroting. If they say, I think the market's going to go up, and I say, yeah, I think the market's going to go up because, you know, we've got all these things happening. There's wind at our sales right now. We've got the Fed probably going to be lowering interest rates. And, you know, and we're coming to Christmas season, so there's going to be a lot of problems coming in. So, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think the market's going to go up too. That's what? Is that parroting or is that paraphrasing? That's paraphrasing. And you're right, Dale. When I paraphrase, it sounds like they did not give me a good enough answer. So here, let me help you. You didn't give me a good enough answer, so let me give you a better answer. That Don't do that. And as salespeople, as financial advisors, we wanna, we've been trained early on to show how smart we are. So we think we're actually helping them when we paraphrase. We think, hey, we're not only are we agreeing, we're, we're, we're showing them that we're, you know, we're smarter than them. We, we've got a lot of information. I'm going to tell them why they're right. No, 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 no. So when, when they give us an answer, we agree with them and say, yeah, that's right. Or we paraphrase and we say it back exactly the way they said it. Or empower the most powerful one, which is tell them they're above average. That answer puts them at the head of the class above average. Does that make sense? But parrot, parrot, parrot. And besides that, guys, what's easier, parroting or paraphrasing? What's easier, parroting or paraphrasing? Parroting is. <laughs> so just do it the easy way because it has way more uh, effect. Now, that's the A. That's, that's talking about attunement with the client. The B was buoyancy. The B was buoyancy. And what they found is that being positive being positive is a great way to get people to do what they want to do. So think positive, talk positive, feel positive. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. You can't, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. I mean, what you want to do is talk about, be positive about the solutions that could occur. The, the solutions could occur. Be positive about the fact that things can get uh, better. And so who would win? Who would win here? Not being able to fix it or Bob the Builder? Because what did Bob the Builder say? What did Bob the Builder always say? Those of you that had kids, what did Bob the Builder always say? Can we do it? Yes, we can. And that's what we want to do. So actually write your answers down. List specific reasons why you can. And do we do this, guys? Do we write down specific things? Like, for example, uh, when we are overcoming objection, do we write down reasons they're right? And is it telling them reasons they're right, is that being buoyant? 
If I tell them the reason when they when they give me an objection, and I tell them all the reasons why their objection is right, is that being buoyant? Why or in? Yes, it is it's being buoyant. Write those things down. Tell them tell them the thing. Uh, this allows you to put together a strategy together and gives the grit to continue. See what you don't want to do uh, is is feel like all is lost. Instead, you're like we can get this done. We have the ability to, to fix these things. Now, here's what they also found, though. If you're only positive, only positive, only positive, do you think that's a good thing? If I went through the 21 point checklist and said, boy, everything's great, this is 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 great, am I going to get a sale? Am I going to be able to sell them? No. No, no, no. So, in my, my questions, what they found out is this is that if you. Uh, 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 flourishing and peak performance. So if you have three positives for every one negative, that's awesome. If you do three or more. They found that if you do 11, more than 11, you get nothing. So 11 to 1 is the top you can do. 11 to 1 is the top you can do. Be po 11 a positive to 1 negative. But because you, you do need the negative, you do the need the negative to get them to move. Everything's perfect, nobody will ever move. Two to one, manage to keep your head above water. One to one, language without hope. And then possible depression if you're giving two negative things to every one thing. And I would tell you, I have listened to tapes where the advisor was negative. What do you think the chance? And, and they would call up and say, I don't know why I didn't get this. Why didn't they get it? Because there were, you know, those of you with uh, Saturday Night Live, do you remember Debbie the Downer? Does anybody want to be around Debbie the Downer? No. No, 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 no. So positivity uh, um, is a huge. Th uh, uh, this is a book on how to be, uh, become positive, um, and in it, you can, they actually have a test that you can take to see how positive are you. Um, do you think, based on my personality, where do you think I, where do you think I ended up? That I was a um, neutral, positive person or a negative person? Nick's got it. I can't see what that one is. Yeah, I was negative. Now, how do I overcome that? How do I overcome that uh, when I'm with a, in front of a person doing a 20 point check? I mean, if I'm negative, if I'm negative, <laughs> I would have, I uh, would not have been able to sell 94% of people. I would not have been able to go from 50000 to to a uh, million dollars a year in three years. So how did I overcome that? I, I stayed on the what? Script. I used APE, Agree, Parrot, Empower. So I overcame my weaknesses by having a what? I overcame my weaknesses because when I was – for, for eight years, I won it. I winged it. I won it. What happened where I started went uh, that I started to change? I had a system, I had a script, I had tools and things like Ape that kept me on path that made me positive during that time. And here's the funny thing: going back to the Best Buy, the the thing that the executives found was hilarious. Was hilarious. They're sitting up there mezzanine and watch me. And they found, they saw me. I would I would uh, be touchy feely with people. And Missy can tell you, I am not a touchy-feely person. I get uncomfortable hugging. I get uncomfortable touching. I am not a touchy-feely person. But I was touchy-feely on the selling TVs, and, and, and I would always get them to laugh. And the thing they found out was hilarious. As soon as I turned around and my back was to them, what happened to my face? Back to business. I was back to business. That smile went – didn't frown, but that smile went what? Was gone. Now I'm back serious. I'm running back to get their TV, get them to the red shirt so I can go back to do it again. So is that being manipulative, guys, if I do that? Yes or no? No, I'm giving those people – do you think everybody – do you think all of the, the people at uh, – what do they call The characters or whatever the, the Disney calls the people at their parks. Do you think every single character at Disney – went to work and loves 
going to work and love love to do their job every single day, every minute of their job. No, but their job is to do what? To give the biggest and best experience, most positive experience possible. So that's our job for folks, to remain positive. So positivity is expressed by amusement. See, I laugh with people. Laughter, appreciation, gratitude, joy, interest, inspiration, hope, pride, all of these things are positive things. I, was, I found a way to be amused with them. We laughed together. I appreciated any humor they gave me. I was, I was very gratitude. Everything, even... I was the only person at Best Buy. Remember, I was probably making 30 bucks a TV, but I sent out a thank you card even back then when I was Best Buy to every person that bought a, um, a TV from me. What the, uh, not only was the number one salesperson for TVs at Best Buy, they later told me, when they, when, when they promoted me to manager, one of the reasons they promoted me to manager is I also was not the top salesperson when it came to TV. I was a top person. Uh, and this is before Google reviews. People actually had to write letters. I was a top person for to write letters to the store saying that I was a great guy. Why do you think they wrote a letter? So, uh, and it wasn't one to one. Not every thank you card went out. Did I get one back? But but it's probably a ten to one. And more than any other person in all the companies Best Buy, I got more positive feedback that people actually had to pick up a piece of paper write the note, put it in an envelope, put a stamp on it, and send it to Best Buy. And why did they do that? Because I showed gratitude to them, they showed gratitude back. Do you think they were joyful when they got the, 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 the thank you card for buying a 20, was it, 29 inch TV from me? I showed interest in it. So these are things, this is what gets people to like you. This is what people get to like you. If you don't do this, you're going to be rejected. See, salespeople see, oh, now, Here's the thing. When we are rejected, though, how should we look at that rejection? I don't care how good you are. Cause even the year I made a million dollars, I was rejected. Now, it was always because, well, I'll, I'll explain what, how I dealt with that. So I was rejected like two or three times that year. I probably lost three sales that year. So how should you deal with that rejection? Well, they found that successful people look at it as temporary versus permanent. Now, when I was making... When I was making uh, $50,000 a year, when I was making $50,000 a year, I looked at it as permanent. The rejection was permanent. All these people in Rochester are stupid. They're all idiots. They all take my, they all, 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 all take my information back to their current guy. And, and do, guys, was I looking at it as, that as temporary or permanent? Was I looking at it as specific or universal? Was I taking it, was I looking at it externally? Or taking it personally. Everybody is dumb as stumps. They're all taking. See what they found is when you instead look at it temporary. When I, that year that I, that I lost deals when I was making a million a year, I lost deals. I said, oh, well that was the one deal I lost. Huh? What went wrong there? What specific? Oh, I made that specific mistake here. I see what I did wrong. Oh, it was it was it wasn't me personally. It was something that I did. It wasn't me personally. They didn't reject me. They reject the thing I said. They reject the thing I didn't do. It wasn't me. They did not like me. They rejected something that I did. This is what, what make, will allow you to become a fantastic salesperson. Even when you get rejection, it's temporary. You know that the rejection was for a specific reason. And it's something that externally. It's not you personally. It's something you can fix. Does that make sense? So if you go Google learned optimum test, optim, optimism test, just put in optimism test, I would highly recommend that you take the optimism t test yourself to see where do you fit on that. Now, again, I was negative, not good, but I've used the systems to overcome that. So today I choose to be happy. The, the last of the scene, now we're running, we're, we're actually down, to, I'm going to zip through this, we're actually down to the ABC, we're back to C, clarity. Uh, clarity means the ability to help see others in their situations in new, more revealing ways. We do that by asking open-ended questions. Identify the problems they didn't know existed. We do that with motivational interviewing. And we do that with the 21-point checklist. 
being a leader is being able to frame a problem in an interesting way. Do we frame problems in interesting ways with our 21 point checklist? Sure we do. We help them see the true problem. And what is the true problem? Their guy is taking advantage of them. So two long-standing sales skills have been stood on their head. One is in the past we provided information. We have to be adept at helping clients identify the information that really affects them. So not giving them information, but instead of helping the client identify the information for themselves. And we used to have to be skilled in answering questions, but now we have to be skilled at asking questions. So here's, a, here's an example of that. They did an experiment find a guy said um, they did an experiment where a guy had a sign that says, I am blind. And they found out that if you added just one sentence to that, one sentence to that, it is spring and I am blind. Three times more giving. I am blind. It is spring and I am blind. And why did that happen? Because you were helped to clarify to people. Uh, the problem with being one of the small problems of being blind. So do you see it? The importance of contrast when communicating with data. You got to get you got to get people to see. And, and uh, the, the example I always use is with an uh, optometrist. They always, he doesn't give you a pair of glasses. Say, hey, is this good? You see okay with this? Okay, go on home. No, they say, click, click. This is this. Click, click. This is this. Click, click. This is this. So clarity is giving people a side by side comparison. Make sense? So we're kind of at the top of the hour here. I would highly recommend that book to sell as human. Uh, if, you, if you're interested in becoming a fantastic, not salesperson, but a fantastic communicator, go back, take that optimism test, see where you are. And if you want to take a shortcut, though, we've taken all of these things in both those books, and we've given you the tool and the program and the system to, to leverage those things in a, in a very effective way for you and for your clients. It's a 21 point checklist. We're coming up on uh, December. You should be doing two things, going through your list and telling them you've got a great gift for them, 11.25% guaranteed, no or, uh, uh, possibility of 11.25 with no risk to money, with the guaranteed principle. That's one thing. Second thing is you should be looking, working on your skills. Um, let's just skip, uh, I didn't get to, uh, far enough today. We're gonna go ahead and skip the script call because I didn't actually get to the script. Uh, portion and it's a holiday holiday week anyway so we're going to script this, uh, skip the script call say that three times fast and i want to wish you all a fantastic wonderful thanksgiving you and your family it's the time of year to be thankful i am thankful for every single one of you you're being on these calls you're putting your trust in us you're putting the effort into to getting better at being a better advisor for your clients thank you thank you thank you so much have a wonderful thanksgiving we'll talk to you all next monday thanks everybody Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, guys.